Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, welcome. Boy, we've got beautiful weather out there. It's awesome here on this weekend right now. Please take advantage of that. And with that, all of a sudden, guess what? No mass. <laughs> all of a sudden, there's no mass. I mean, it's like it's like people taking a vacation for a minute, <laughs> if you will. And um, and so the whole idea is that um, uh, I, I would say this. I would say this. Relax. You know, if, you, if you're sitting up at home and you've been cooped up and whatever, take a chair and just go right outside on your sidewalk on your front porch or whatever and then sit there and just enjoy that sun and you've got about two or three days that you can do that throughout the state of Oregon for that matter we got sunshine here here in this in the beautiful state and here we are today we're just entering if you will getting close to the point where we're going to be interested in getting involved into the election piece aspect of it it's going to be huge huge in the state of Oregon throughout the other throughout the throughout the state throughout the state but throughout the country for that matter but the, but the whole idea is that uh, <clears throat> uh, I want you to be relaxed because we definitely need the opportunity, if you will, to kind of just kind of take it easy for a moment yeah. and, and get things back together. And as you note, um, if, you've been, if you haven't been looking at the news and whatever, you need to take the time out sometimes, uh, this, especially now, and look at the news, read the newspaper as much as you possibly can, and more particularly, look at this show. If you've got Comcast, if you've got Comcast, you can tune right in to this particular show on uh, on the specific days. It's live, uh, starting on it's live on on Sundays at 4 p.m. Live on Sunday at 4 p.m. and uh, on Channel 11, Channel 11, 4 p.m. You can tune right on in, and then it reruns on on uh, the respective days, uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesday at noon, and Tuesday and Friday at 8 p.m. Tuesday, 24, 25. Uh, one of those channels, and and the same thing on, on uh, on Friday at which is 8 p.m. but 24, 25 or something like that. But uh, but anyway, it you, you can see it. Uh, it it's announced also uh, in in the remarks on the the, the live show at 11 o'clock, and it will be on YouTube too. Uh, we've been having a little little difficult getting that together, but we're going to get that straight. And all you have to do then is just Google YouTube and look up under Oregon Voters Digest, and you get it. I'm giving you this information at the at the front of the show at this point in time because we're going to be very, very much involved here at the Oregon Voters Digest interviewing candidates and interviewing issues, interviewing issues. And also, and I would hope that uh, those candidates are looking at the show will understand that. Uh, I want to get to the issues, issues aspect of it. And the way we're going to do this, and uh, just as a, as a filler, uh, <laughs> uh, the area we, we're running out of and, and actually doing all the broadcasting is here at Open signal, open signal, community television. That's the only way to go, by the way. It's community television, but naturally we are, we're on Comcast and on Channel 11 aspect of it. And hopefully if, if they, everything works out right, we're going to get it throughout the, throughout the state of Oregon. But primarily we're going to be working in the largest city, in the area, the largest city and the, and the largest county in the state of Oregon. And that is here in the Portland metropolitan area, Portland and Multnomah County, right? In district district number two, I guess, but Three. but anyway, the largest county. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we're going we're going to be doing that here, and uh, <clears throat> and the way I'd like to start the show is that I'm going to start with a gubernatorial candidate. Just so happened, boy, we're we're, we're fortunate to, that he's he's running from this particular area. I mean, there might be several others, but uh, one person that I'm very very sure of, and this gentleman by the name of John Sweeney, he's run for office before, but in fact he was. Uh, I think it was that uh, he ran. He ran for office, and he was working on for what's it, uh, educational service district. Yeah, the Multnomah Education Mo Service yeah, District. Multnomah County, excuse And he, he served two terms there. Aspect of it, but but again, he's he's been still been very very involved in community from that point on. He's been on Voters Digest in the past for a number of years, and then at the same time, uh, we talked about some very interesting subject matters. One of which is which, which is rele relevant today. And that is the whole issue of, of weapons. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's an expert in that particular arena. We've done some things along that line, and uh, and all the other areas. So we got John Sweeney here. John Sweeney is here with me today, and we're going to use John, and uh, and hopefully uh, 
you'll get the idea. He's running for statewide office. He's running for governor. And uh, we're going to, okay, at times, uh, you, you can, by the way, you know, once the, once the voters' pamphlets comes out and the, this, that, and the other, you'll see excerpts of basically his press releases and things of that nature that he'll be putting out. But we're going to take advantage of it to a certain degree because uh, we'll, we'll also talk about local issues. We'll talk about local issues and we'll talk about some, some very specific issues that I think that the voting public needs to know. And that, that sort of reinforces... That, that reinforces the fact that uh, if we've got folks who are running for office that can't talk and identify the issues, we've got issues. And I would suggest that to you, that you need to understand it. Still with the pandemic and this, that, and the other, it's going to be very difficult to, to knock on doors. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be very difficult to knock on doors because we're still right in the midst of, uh, of this, 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 this serious situation with the pandemics and whatever. You know, we, in fact, a lot of people don't even know what's, what's going on right now. Is that is that bad? You know, we, at one moment, at one moment, we were told that we have to. It was mandatory for the mass, and then just recently, John, mm -hmm. uh, and just recently, all of a sudden, <laughs> the mass is not here anymore. I mean, all this, the states not. Oregon was one of the leading leading four states that said no mass, yeah. no mass in the schools and whatever. And I'm sure that the the, the grown-ups are saying, "Hey, I'm not wearing them any." <laughs> so consequently, now, here we are now with no mass. And uh, in all due respect, the federal government basically was, was going to give us masks. In fact, yeah. we're still waiting. People are still waiting for the masks that has been shipped out to, to the entire nation for that matter. <laughs> you see? And here we are. We spent all that money on, on all these masks. And then now we're being told, don't wear the mask. <laughs> Welcome aboard, John. Now you know. We, we, where, where are we? Well, I, you know, I've got a, I've got a new definition and, 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 uh, and, and, and position. Let me say, a definition, if you will, for for this for this area that we're in, the swamp. You've heard that name before. Oh yeah. Have you heard that before? The swamp. Yeah, they refer to it as uh, Washington D.C. and then in Oregon, it's it's basically it's Portland. You yeah. Know, it's really bad. Every, every state has a swamp, so we have our swamp, and it's Portland, Oregon. Hmm. Portland, Oregon, and the guy that's put the advertisement on that whole piece is uh, one of our six mayors. His name is Ted Wheeler. You remember that guy? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm just throwing that out to you, and I want John to be jumping right on in this piece. But I, but I, I said six mayors, right? Because uh, at one point in time, one of the commissioners, say the commissioners, Mingus Maps, mm -hmm. he he made a uh, he he'd made a point in one of the in one of their 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 their, their so-called um, meetings, city mm -hmm. council meetings, said that there are five mayors mm -hmm. here at the city council, mm -hmm. five mayors, and I said, oh no, there's an ex extra one because th there's a prior. Mayor Sam Adams, mm -hmm. he was mayor, mm -hmm. he, former mayor Sam Adams. Yeah, so we got around, that's yeah. right. We got six mayors mm -hmm. in the city of Portland, mm -hmm. and we still got problems, yeah. big problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I want to make sure we throw that piece out there, folks. We're going to be discussing those kinds of things mm -hmm. too, and then that we got the largest county in the state of Oregon, and then we got an issue there. Yeah. We, we've got we've got uh, well we got we, the, one of the main issues is the fact that uh, uh, the chair Deborah Kafori is term limits. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to be there anymore. And the biggest thing that's going on over there is that all of the other three commissioners that are sitting commissioners mm -hmm. are all running for her seat. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. because you may, I think you've got a little background on that piece in terms of uh, are, do they qualify actually to, to run for, for the county chair and while they're sitting commissioners if they're, if they're not running already or what? What's the deal on that deal? Well, <clears throat> the... Uh, I'm sorry, folks. Oh. Just John Sweeney. You, you've seen yeah. him here before. Go ahead, John. Well, the city commissioners uh, could run for just about anything, and the county commissioners, they could run for another office in their last year of their office. And I think there's three of the four are running for the chair of Multnomah County. Right. One of them is running for re-election. Right. That's uh, District Two. Yeah. Yeah. And so the other three are running for the for the chair, and it's because their term limited out. So. They will be gone from the county commission. Where there will be, if they lose, all three will be gone. If, right. they, if one of them wins, then they'll be on as the uh, uh, chair uh, starting next year. But uh, there's somebody else who's got to got to look on that 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 seat. I'm looking at them right. Yeah, here. yeah. But you know, you know. But you ask yourself the question. I guess the thing that came to my mind was that. Uh, as you note, um, uh, that chair, I mean, mm -hmm. Kafori, 
who's been there, she, mm -hmm. she's been there, well, be, she would have been there about eight years then, see, mm -hmm. right? She was yeah. spent the time aspect of it. But, but if you notice, uh, the, the other commissioners were not as prominent, if you mm -hmm. will, taking the lead role yeah. on the various issues. Mm -hmm. The way it's set up, you mm -hmm. would think, and, it, and it's districtized. It's exactly. not like the city of Portland. Exactly. The county is districtized. They've, mm -hmm. got, they've got four districts, mm -hmm. and there's a commissioner for each district, mm -hmm. right? You got me? And you would think that when the, when the, when the media, you, know, you, you can follow up on that piece if you would like, but the idea is that what I've seen is that whenever they're wanting to talk about Multnomah County, or it's just Multnomah County as a whole, mm -hmm. and never in the specific areas like the district. For instance, we have the biggest issue of a lot of times, some of the issues that we have here in the, in the, in the so-called swamp, Mm -hmm. That's district number mm -hmm. two, and she's running for her second. Uh, she, I, don't, I don't remember the name right off the bat, but the bottom line is that uh, uh, she's running. But the but the district number two incorporates the city of Portland mm -hmm. in the city of Portland. So that's where all the action is, mm -hmm. all the demonstrations and all this 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 that and the other aspect of it, and uh, and and yet and still you don't hear you don't see the district two person commenting on her performance. From the standpoint of what are you doing about the problems here, you know, it's, it's like as if to say the chair always is the one that's pretty well talked to, right? Right, mm -hmm. and, and then it's supposed to be a deal where the, the county, the city, is supposed to be working with the county mm -hmm. together, Multnomah County and Portland. You hear that? You hear that piece? As yeah. if to say they were two big major, but that's not the case. Portland just happened to be in district number two. Yeah. So you got a county commission that's supposed to be dealing with the issues. Mm -hmm. But yet not doing it, and the media is just focusing on the chair. Right. Who's responsible? Going on. Well, she's making noise because the thing is that <clears throat> supposedly she's going to run for governor too. So oh, is that right? Oh yes. Oh wow. Of course, she might decide that maybe she's going to take on a city job, but we haven't seen anything. Right. And uh, she was making noise last year. In fact, the problem was that uh, it might have caused her problems because. Uh, when um, Bev Stein decided to run for governor, she started running too soon, and she got bumped out of office in the, not in her last year, but uh, in the next to the last year. So she didn't have that platform to talk about, so she ended up losing. Now, if we give you a little history, if you go back to uh, Resolution A in, in 1983, before that, Multnomah County government was a complete government, just like the city of Portland. Mm -hmm. Then they had uh, Resolution A, and the, um, the there's little, little, very little unincorporated Multnomah County now. Okay. Because what happened was the county took over basically the welfare and the jails, and the only because Portland had their own jail and the bridges. Nobody wanted the bridges, so Multnomah County ended up with the bridges. Mm -hmm. So that's the only physical thing they have. Their uh, parks and stuff were, uh, some were parceled out to different cities around. And then the, the real cherries, you know, uh, Columbia Crossing, or the Columbia Moorage, and uh, Oaks, not Oaks, but uh, uh, a couple of the good parks out there, the names escape me for the moment. Okay, okay. And they went to Metro. Mm -hmm. And mm. some of those plums went to Metro. Okay. And then they did come out with the term limits. And then it was a deal is that the three people that had something to do was basically the chairman, the sheriff, and the auditor. Because okay. there used to be a, uh, a sayer and, and a couple other little offices. That, that all disappeared. And the, the cities, you know, Portland and Gresham and a few others, mm -hmm. They didn't have anything to do with that. They were going to con con concentrate on streets and sewers and mm -hmm. water and parks and, and all that kind of stuff. But then when the city commissioner or the county commissioners ran out of room, then they came over to the city and they still wanted to do the welfare stuff because that's the stuff they knew. Mm -hmm. So now when you go around the city of Portland, you you see they call them human services, but it's... Right. It's welfare. So okay. you'll see state, city, and county. And the thing about that is you have all these hierarchies that it, you're, you're feeding. Okay. See? And, and I feel that, you know, there should be a strat stratification of services mm -hmm. so that all of the uh, welfare human services would be at the county level. So 
uh, what happens is uh, somebody's going along in life and their world will collapse, they know to go to the county mm -hmm. uh, because the people that are milking the system, they know where to go for this and where to go for that, you mm -hmm. know, but the people who have been, been uh, working and following the rules, they don't know that the ropes and sometimes mm -hmm. they end up losing a lot of stuff mm -hmm. to begin with. But if they had it all at the county, then the thing is they could do a uh, uh, coordination of services. You know, mm -hmm. that's what's happened with, with the charities who come Christmas time, you mm -hmm. know, the Sunshine Division and oh, okay. Salvation Army okay. and Goodwill, and, and that all kind of blends out real okay. well. Okay. So that's what they need to do. Okay. And, uh, and with the city of Portland, now I was with them for 32 years and eight months, and and I was with the parks, and you know, and some of the park commissioners, you could really feel them all the way down at the bottom. Okay. Uh, Armand Beam, Frank Ivancy, Mildred Schwab were good commissioners. But right now, public safety is, is really, if, if you're a government employee, it doesn't make any difference whether you're a policeman or you're a clerk. Mm -hmm. The ultimate thing is public safety first. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the city of Portland and they're talking about how bad it is, the thing is right now, Police, fire, and 911 is under three separate bosses. Really? That's right. So the deal is, they, and I've argued for this, they should all be under one. And somebody says, well, that's too much power because everybody's got, he, the mayor, that one person's got the, all that power. No, it is three bureaus, and you're talking to three people about public safety. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing that's, that's ever. Now, that's at the city. That's at the city. That's at the city, okay. Because the mayor has the police. Um, the communication for you, who's that? Who's that? Uh, Hardesty has fire, and okay. and I forget who has has the uh, nine one one. Okay, okay. See? So I, you, I think that's I think that's maps, maps. Right, yeah. and the trick is, see, if two or more of those meet, say they want to have three people meeting, they have to have advance notice to the press because they have to be there in case they make a decision. See, if they right. got three people there, they can make a decision. Right. But the thing is. If it's under one one boss, the three three bureaus can get together and talk about it. But the thing is, because it's spread so thin, if they like, I say if they want it, they just can't have an impulse and go to one of the offices because that'd be violating the law. Ah, uh, I got you. I got you. And that's that's part of the thing. Is it? That's part of the problem. Yeah, for the public safety, you've got the three major three give me. Okay. elements of public safety. And that's and they've been dragging their feet. You know, they talked for a long time about about um, you know body cams and dash yes, cams right. and the places that have had it. It has solved so many problems. You know, right. somebody has denied that they didn't do something. Right. That you show them the camera says, "Now was this you? And is that what you did? Yes, it is. So I guess you did it, right? Yeah, I did it. You know, so yeah. they write them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually okay. write them a ticket okay. or something. Okay. It's well, all well, over. well, maybe that's where Mingus was coming from when he made that statement about the fact that we have. Five mayors, I say six, yeah. but five mayors because, yeah. like you said, he's he's maybe in charge of that, that this one particular bureau, right? right? And then these other two bureau folks are over here, mm -hmm. and he and he knows that has to be interaction, yeah. and but yet still they're just focusing on him, mm -hmm. and he makes a decision, but he can't make the decision because these folks are in the same boat. Yeah, and sometimes they get their uh, snoot in the wrong place, you yes, know, and they yes. get really. Really yeah. whacked out of shape. Right, right, exactly, exactly. You know, it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, we're talking public safety, and then you have somebody gets a, gets a, in a bad mood or something. Right. Because somebody comes up and says, "Well, this is what we should do," and they says, and someone says, "Well, you know, I was on vacation. You didn't consult me." <laughs> hey, if it's all on the public safety under the one pay person, which would mm -hmm. be the mayor. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think at one time the uh, police was under another commissioner rather than the mayor. Wow. What a chicken that yeah. deal that, that, <laughs> that is. You know. Gee, gee whiz. Yeah. Wow. So it, it's, and you could just have the other bureaus farmed out logically. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of like some small towns, they mm -hmm. want to have, have sewers and water mm -hmm. together. And I said, or sewers, yeah, sewers and water together. And I said, you know, I kind of object about mm -hmm. somebody's uh, sewer shovel going in my water. Right, 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 right. Well, look, on that same point, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. now, when, uh, however, you've got the county here, mm -hmm. and in each of those municipalities, mm -hmm. they have the same threesome thing, public safety. 
in, in like, like Gresham, they got that public safety. Now, do, do they have the same three components, and are they under one entity? I think the deal is most of them have a, uh, a city manager that reports to ah. the to the mayor or city administrator okay. that reports to the mayor. See? Okay. And the chief of police and fire, and would be, and of course, the nine one ones under the the city, and they report to the city manager who reports to the to the mayor. So that goes just straight up. Okay. So they don't have that conflict. Ah, ah. So it's working a bit better, right? Yeah. And because of course, uh, the interagency agreements works pretty good. You know, when something gets real big, why Portland helps Gresham and Portland and Gresham will help Portland mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. and around there. But the thing is, in the uh, cities like Gresham and that, the deal is the police and fire, they report to the city manager, the city administrator who reports to the mayor. Ah, okay. See? So it's still two of the three are there. And the deal is they talk about wanting to change the city of Portland, uh, former government. They don't need to change the former government. What okay. they just do is need to change the reorganization. Mm -hmm. And when they do the reorganization, uh, are they going to be like Multnomah County? You've got the, the mayor that's got to do something, and then you've got four commissioners that don't have have much, like in the county. You know, <laughs> they're paying a lot of money, and you know, <laughs> not much. <laughs> and and uh, the and I had friends I was active in the union, and they talked about they had different commissioners that were really good bosses that yeah. they would come down and and check on things. Uh, like when I was uh, first got on with the city, Ormond Bean was there, and about once a week, he'd go on tour, and the uh, superintendent at the time, now the, he'd have a an agenda lined up. Well, sometimes things were going haywire, and the union says, you know, you need to come over and look at something, such and such. <laughs> and Armin says, we're going over here, so we go over here, and here's here's the uh, director of parks, you know, wiping the stuff off of his face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but, you know, and... So, the, and the union had a real good working relationship mm -hmm. with the uh, with the city commission. Mm -hmm. It was real good, and they knew which one to go. Now, it may pay to change where you have the um, commissioners by district, but they could still run bureaus. Yeah, right, right, see? right. So, you know, in a lot of ways, it's not broke, so don't fix it. But right, it just right. need it's, it's a matter of organization. So, so that so that top person, that that top seat. Yeah. Needs, to, needs to basically really manage, if yeah. you will, right? And that's 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 the lacking, yeah. because I'm just thinking about, that's why we've got this swamp thing going. I'm going right back to the this whole area here. Yeah. We've got the county and we got the city, right? You got me? And the counties pretty well have their acts together. Like mm -hmm. you said, they may have a city manager or whatever, but they've got a flow. Yeah. They know what they are. But, yeah. but when you come to the Portland metropolitan area, that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, well, you know, the deal is when you were in the Marine Division yeah. and I was in the... Army Guard Division. There was a two-star general yep. up there. Yep. That's right. That's right. He's the one you all answer. E exactly. Exactly. And, and we don't have. Well, that, and all due respect, and to the viewing audience, and that's why you know. I, I mean, a lot of folks are confused about the, the definition of the city, yeah. the definition of the county, but more the city. And we've got all these issues that are facing with mm -hmm. us today. You know, we got the whole issue with with homelessness. Mm -hmm. We got the whole issue, like you were saying, the, the homelessness aspect of it. We, we've got the, the garbage pickup. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's these, these, and there, there should be bureaus to deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. But again, someone needs to be managing basically that flow. Right, and I, and I think that should be under the county, and the, the city and could do things to to help them, because you look at the the uh, homeless thing mm -hmm. or houseless, whatever they want to call mm -hmm. it, you know. And some of those people like it that way, yeah. Because in the parks, and I had the parks out there in North Portland, and they had a lot of them out there, and. Some of my park attendants, they'd get out there and get talking to them, and they they wanted it that way because they felt that they were free, mm -hmm. and uh, they weren't uh, interested because they were getting by. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I talked to a bunch of them. There was a talk about hiring and about, so I talked to several of them. I must have talked to 12 or 15 of them about getting on temporary, which mm -hmm. could lead to permanent. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we don't have an address. I said, you can use my office. Mm -hmm. I said, can use the phone and I can get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. 
None of them were interested. Mm -hmm. But the deal is most people I talk to says, you know, you could get on temporary and then they have these exams and you can become permanent. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were really interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, tell me this, John, was there any time where things looked like they was working pretty good between the uh, as a pro was there a time when, when, when the flow was going pretty good within, as far as the city and the county was concerned? City of Portland. Uh, what, what area was it? Yeah, I think when, when uh, Terry Shrunk was the Terry mayor. Terry Shrunk, okay. Because he had, had been a fireman, then he became the sheriff, and then he became the mayor. And, and he had the exposure. Yeah, and they worked back and forth, you know, and uh, it, it just worked well, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it just seemed to work well. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, they they just just seem to work well and uh, the, and and the other part about um, when the resolution A, mm -hmm. the city of Portland was a ten mile by ten mile square, and then when this came in they expanded the, the boundaries, and uh, Portland's now a ten mile by fifteen mile rectangle, and the dividing line between Gresham and, and Portland is out there, one eighty six uh, no. 181, 182 along there, because that's oh, for the, is that trout deal up in that area. Yeah, well, it's actually not quite that far. Okay, okay. And what that's for is so the two big sewer systems are gravity fed, and that's so that's why that why did they pick the boundary here? Why didn't they pick 122nd or something like that? They looked out there and they looked at the slope of the land, and so at 181, 182, because it goes up and then it jogs, that's where they made the boundary because that's how the sewer systems work on being gravity fed. Huh. So. And they use that. Uh, as the boundary. As the boundary. Wow. Now, and I think there might be a few places where there's, there's uh, Gresham lines into Portland and right. the Portland lines right. into Gresham, right. but it's basically the topography dictated that because it made the sewer systems work better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, again, that same point. In, in, folks, you understand now, that's why I'm calling this the swamp. Yeah. <laughs> the swamp. We're in a swampy area, and it's the largest of its kind here within the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's, it's confusing, and right in front of it, there's a need of some sort of a repair, mm -hmm. and we're trying to do that, right? right. And they're having these discussions about uh, districtizing the city of Portland, right? Got me? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and whether or not they're in need of a city manager, uh, and and, I, and what I was what I was hearing from you, from the standpoint when you said that Trump, when Trump was was mayor, he had actually had experience and exposure in mm -hmm. both the county and the city mm -hmm. and other entities. Right. So therefore, when he was he, he understood that and he'd already developed a definition mm -hmm. of how it which should work. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the other hand, today's situation, the way that mm -hmm. the makeup of let's say of, of the of the city council, they've not had that exposure. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any anybody that was sitting there. Other than may, maybe Sam Adams, yeah. the former mayor, he was a mayor because when he was working for Vera Katz, yeah. he, had, he had quite a he had, he had some time there to really kind of work with the county because yeah. Vera was Vera was a, an exposure kind of a person too. She'd yeah. been around, she'd yeah. been around, and so she didn't, didn't, didn't have she was in the legislature, right? She was in yeah. the legislature, and so she basically worked with the county during that particular time. And Sam yeah. had that opportunity. But other than that, the other the other five entities that are sitting there, the city councils and the mayor, both, all of them. They've not had that experience. You know what no, I mean? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They have well, nothing. You, yeah, and Vera Katz, she was, she also was uh, a full-time employee with Portland Community College. Right, right. So <clears throat> had this interagency action. And, you know, um, you look at the city council and the five five commissioners, <clears throat> and they have, have bureau heads that have the background. You know, it's just exactly. like... Yeah, no. You and I have been transferred right. around, and suddenly you right. come into the unit that's there, and and you're a, you're in charge. Well, who do you believe? The, hey, you go to the your most, head. most yeah. senior person that's right was there. there. That's right. That's right. So why don't it, it's it, not that hard? You know, they're yes, yes. You're right. It's kind of like they're barking at the moon on a cloudy night. You know, <laughs> not even, and they're not getting an echo. You know, <laughs> and the public is saying, "Hey, I mean, who who should I call at City Hall to deal with this garbage situation?" Well, guess what? Not the bureau head. The commissioner, and they don't have the background. Yeah, and the, and the garbage is with with Metro. So yeah, right. So what what, what the hell? So who do yeah. you call it Metro? But they don't say that, right? No. 
I don't think so. But what? the, the uh, information number is that I've used a few times with the city is pretty good. But you know, you've got somebody that's been there a while, and exactly, you know, and and you know, a lot of people make derogatory comments about go government workers, but really. People who have a job, whether public or private, they want to do a good job. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. Well, yep. well they get paid, too. Yeah. yeah well, you know how it is. Careers. In a service, you know, when things go good, you really feel good. That's right. When things don't go bad. Hey. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, you know, since we thought about that, so we talked a little bit about Now, we got all this garbage situation right now. Uh -huh. I mean, the cleansing. Way. Who do they call? The first thing on the mindset, call the city of Portland. Yeah. And then, the, and then they react from the standpoint and say, well, hey, we need more money. So then everybody gets this big fusion of money. Metro picks up some money. The city of Portland picks up some money. Big mm -hmm. money. Got mm -hmm. pots of money aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then, but the place, need, the place is, is dirty as hell. It needs to be cleaned up. And they say, so, so who do people call? They call the city. Yeah. And then the city is kind of like in charge of, let's pick the garbage. But they have no background within the garbage picking. That's Metro's job. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, Jesus. they've done, they've gone out and done some cleanups, but the thing is, they haven't said, okay, where are we going to put these exactly. people? And pick a spot and says, this is where you're going to go. Yeah. And if you don't, we're going to put you in the can overnight, right, and right. maybe your stuff won't be there in the morning. That's right, that's right. But the deal is, you have a place where they're going to go, and that, <clears throat> and then you have the restrooms for them, and maybe you could even... Uh, borrow from the uh, National Guard to mm -hmm. shower and the laundry services because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, I went to uh, Fort Irwin, California and <laughs> had field shower and <laughs> I didn't, wasn't there long enough to need laundry. Right, 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 you know, right, right, <laughs> when right, he set right. it up, you know, right, 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 they right, could right. set that stuff up. Right, right, right. And, and actually, if you look at a lot of those empty buildings downtown, <clears throat> they play, have places for parking and things, but they have garbage pickup and on every floor they have restrooms and drinking fountains so on each one of the floors they could put in a shower systems and a kitchenette and uh, a laundry net you know they can get to wash machines like they have in a motor home you know you mm -hmm. put the clothes in mm -hmm. the washes and dries it all mm -hmm. at one time and the, the walls are removable so you can just basically remove uh, most of the walls and you put these 20 by 20 squares and you can assign them where they could set their tent up mm -hmm. in the building. Mm -hmm. And so one would be dry, mm -hmm. they get in their tents and it'd mm -hmm. be fairly warm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it also would give them an address, the, the building address, the floor, and the space number. Because mm -hmm. that's what really helps a lot of them if they want to get back on their feet, mm -hmm. is to have a home base. Mm -hmm. And this is where they've... You know, they're trying to get these homes, but the thing is, it's it's a matter of having an address mm -hmm. because if they have a place for the address and a place to plug on their their cell phone and a few other things, life would be good. You know? So who would be responsible for that? Well, naturally, the city is supposed to be in the housing business. Yeah. They're the housing. They give the permits to building and this, that, and the other aspect of it. But that's just the housing business. But see, they have a lot of downtown buildings that are not running. And a lot of them are equipped with, with restaurants. But the, if you had a little, like, kitchen X, they, they could fix their own food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See? And so the deal is, and I figure they could put just about 100 people per floor. So you look at a 20-story building, you know, you're talking about 2,000 people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there is a lot of buildings downtown that are boarded up. Mm -hmm, In fact, mm -hmm. there's one, I think, right across from City Hall or the Portland building. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <clears throat> In fact, yeah, it's across from the Portland building, and I remember when I was doing jury duty, went over there for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for uh, for a croissant, you know, mm -hmm, for lunch. Mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, as you can see, we <laughs> we're in the swamp. Yeah. And we've got to resolve that issue if, if in fact, we're going to improve, right? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah. And so the name of the game is that it's so confusing that that uh, just even having just a decent discussion as to where you go, that's tough. Right well, now it is. Well, you know, one Who's thing. Who's responsible? Yeah, and going on, there's a lot of people making money running around saying, I can't, 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 or but, 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 but. Mm -hmm. And they make, a, they, they make a living at that. Mm -hmm. Rather than saying, okay, this is a problem, we're going to solve it. See, the deal is if they dumped it in our lap, we'd probably have, have a result in two weeks. Right, 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 right. Well, you know, and, and as you were thinking about taking some of the major issues that we're, we're faced with today, 
and we may if we may not have time to get them all but that's why we, we're taking this time mm -hmm. and hopefully the 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 viewing audience will be patient with us because this is not a sound bite stuff we're talking about no no this this is something we got to have a discussion you need to know history about about yeah you got to have history has to be brought to the table to be able to deal with this these mm -hmm. issues and people need to be knowledgeable as such because they are the ones that are paying for this stuff. Mm -hmm. The public's paying for this stuff. The voting oh, yeah. public are paying for this stuff. Mm -hmm. But in all due respect, but paying for what? Got yeah. me? We got we to get something to put that sound. And then let's just take the garbage aspect of it. Like you said, Metro is running. That's, that's what they do. That's mm -hmm. their lane. Mm -hmm. Metro is garbage. Yeah. We got garbage on the street. Mm -hmm. But the way, the way it's projected from the media standpoint and from the public standpoint, the city of Portland is responsible for the garbage. And they're basically calling all the shots. Yeah. It should be Metro's job yeah. to call the shots. Yeah. And that's where the money should be in an organized way. Mm -hmm. And that's where those commissioners down there mm -hmm. are controlling that budget, right? You got mm -hmm. me? And when you think about it, and I, used to work at, I used to work at the U.S. Uh, waste management aspect of it and U.S. waste. And the bottom line is that I was in that aspect of it, but it was Metro. That mm -hmm. I sit on several committees mm -hmm. at Metro about the garbage. Mm -hmm. Well, it's organized. Yeah. They got routes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they compete with one another. And they got dumping sites. It's clean. So meaning mm -hmm. when a person when a person gets up in the morning, the garbage is gone. Yeah. You just go by pick up your can and put it on the in the backyard, right? Yeah. You got me? And today <laughs> so now all of a sudden the city of Portland is supposed to uh, are being responsible for the garbage. Yeah. And they're getting all the money yeah. to deal with the whole issue of garbage. Mm -hmm. And you got stuff sprued all over the place, aspect yeah. of it. And you would think that uh, uh, and I'm just thinking from a, just a simple term, go go to the metro people mm -hmm. and the people who's handling the garbage aspect of it and say, We've got a problem here. We're not picking up enough garbage here, mm -hmm. this, this, that, and the other. Well, hey, I'm just saying, for, for instance, okay, fine. Well, we got more garbage, whatever, and then, well, uh, uh, guess what? Guess what? We'll just give it to Metro. Metro comes out, organize the plan, mm -hmm. and put up the garbage pickup with the various routers mm -hmm. in the area aspect of it, and then say, okay, fine. Uh, if you drive down this way and then you see couches or this, that, and the other around the deal, you take a photo, you call up the dispatcher, somebody picks it up. Yeah. It's, it's out, out of the way, and it's clean. But my point is, they're not talking that way. That's, that's the thing that, that, that bothers me about that whole piece. Yeah. Well, like my park district, the thing is that <clears throat> uh, graffiti was really bad. Right. Well, we went out there and had some uh, universal paint, which was uh, uh, pearl gray from uh, Miller Paint. And, right. And we would paint over it. Right. And, and pearl gray was fabulous because it would cover almost... 19 times out of 20 the okay. first time okay. even even over the red okay and you just kept up you know and some of the other di districts were saying well how come you don't have much graffiti i says because when somebody makes a mark <laughs> we make a swipe with the okay. paint okay yeah because the uh and it was organized right my park attendants had it you know they went around in fact one of them uh larry brown says he was there and he says he was going like this and he looked over and here was some guy that was face got real long it must have been his graffiti so mm -hmm. then and Larry started stroking and a whistling yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but you just got to keep after yeah, it yeah, right, 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 right. well thing. what happened to that I mean all of a sudden the city is supposed to be doing that they're part of parks right they deal with yeah. the parks right you got well, all I can do is talk to you about my area out there in North Park I got you this is what we're going to do yeah, yeah I got you and and I had uh, four park attendants and they each had a had a section of it, and they just kept right at it. Wow, wow. And they had a real big project where we'd go out there in an afternoon and, you know, we got four or five guys of slop and paint. So right, 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 right. But it did not did not last because we were on it. Well, what, so, so why was it operating so efficiently as opposed to where I was operating now? Now you call the city of Portland, hmm. and they dip in and get the money, and they're basically saying, okay, we're going to take bids on, on taking this hmm. stuff. What happened to the process that you're talking about? I don't know, but you know, <clears throat> I'm like you, I was in the military a long time, you know, we right. want things organized, yep, and yep, so yep. this is how we did it, and then the deal is that, uh, and when I first got that district, I figured it'd take two, three years to get it whipped out of shape, mm -hmm. and really, for all the details took mm -hmm. almost five, but mm -hmm. the deal is, uh, it got, got taken care of, and the things like the... Uh, the graffiti is easy because right. usually it's on concrete right, or right, something right, like that, right, and, right, right. and uh, 
you know, 12 inch roller with three quarter inch nap. Yeah. Why? It doesn't yeah. take long. Right, right, right. Well, you know, again, along that graffiti aspect of it, now you drive around the city, it's on transportation signs and all direction signs. I mean, people that just, hey, you, you can go up there in the morning or at night and you've got some guy with, with the spray paint and just doing his thing. Well, how did we get to that particular point, John? Well, actually, if you stood against the building and didn't move, you might get painted yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. But it's because they can get away, get away get with away. it. And I, yeah. I remember there was a show and it was some gangbanger saying, you yeah, know, we're killing each other over property we don't own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're they're marking this stuff as their territory, mm -hmm. and they actually get in some pretty nasty fights mm -hmm. over quote their territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Woo! Back in the swamp, folks. That's where we are right now. And, and you know, and the thing that comes to mind, and that's kind of like where I'm going with this thing, the aspect of it. You know, we got an election process right now. People are running for office. Uh -huh. And you ask yourself the question, the things that we've been talking about from the standpoint of how things were organized beforehand, that we talked about very a bit, this, that, and the other, and whatever. And, but the fact of the matter, these people had backgrounds. Uh -huh. They had backgrounds. They, they were familiar with the territory because they had background because they'd worked in other different areas so they had a resume mm -hmm. that when they ran for office mm -hmm. they could articulate mm -hmm. they had some background they could do the job yeah. whereas on the other hand when you when you file to run for office today there's no background yeah you know so so maybe that might be an area that we may we, we may want to consider and that is maybe uh, change that 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 application process such that, that whoever's going to be running for office Maybe identify some of the things that you're going to be doing, and the kind of background that we need to do to be able to do the job. As well, I'm just I don't know. I'm just throwing that on the table. What do you think about something like that? Well, I I think the press needs to do a better job because a lot okay. of times when they're out there, and they've actually guided the uh, campaigns with their issue mm -hmm. rather than talking about getting there as as uh, what is you, the candidates see it and what and you lay it out. These are these different problems, mm -hmm. and start attacking the the, the official ones. Because uh, one fellow was running for um, uh, state treasurer, right? And so he was had a, having an interview, and he was a Republican against this Democrat, and they were talking about education and all this. And the Republican says, "We're not running for superintendent of public instruction. We're running for state treasurer." So they asked a couple money questions, and this guy. One Edwards, he didn't know a nickel from a dime, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, I run for a lot of offices. I never run for a uh, treasurer's job because I just think uh, it was a, uh, that's not my ball game. Mm -hmm. I did run for city auditor, but there's mm -hmm. more for city for the city auditor to do than than just the counting the money. Right, right, right. They right. had several de several right. uh, functions, you know, the right. county the council clerk and. Uh, the actually the elections officer mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, but <clears throat> and the pr the press these day ask them about their backgrounds and publicize that background mm -hmm. and actually get into what this office is about. Right. You know, it's because um, a, a county commissioner is just a, basically a legislator for county ordinances, whereas a city. A commissioner is a, an administrator, uh, legislator, so they have two functions. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that it's always nice if they have some uh, function besides uh, liking to have good weather or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, as the old term say, you know, from our military background, it, 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 this is not those positions are not OJT type jobs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying on the job training, right? No, you can't. You've got to be prepared when you sit in that seat, okay? Yeah. And that's not happening today. Well, you and I have been assigned someplace and had to do it OJT. Oh, it, it was a monster. Oh, no. <laughs> whole different ball game. But we, <laughs> but we had some exposure when you, when you. That's that's one the whole idea of ranking and and the, and the IE the, the levels that you deal with. Mm. So, uh, so anyway. Uh, again, we, we're discussing this area. We, we've gone, we've done the garbage thing aspect of it. We, we've done that, and then, then naturally, uh, one of the biggest things that we, that's, that's, that's on the table is the whole issue of, of, of public safety. Yeah. Public safety, and not a lot of times they're looking at just Portland police, 
but from the county standpoint, mm. it, it's it's all the municipalities with their law enforcement aspect of it. Mm. And uh, it's kind of interesting when you look at the Portland police aspect of it. You got the union, you you got the union, mm. uh, i.e., and those are the guys that are dealing with the with the folks, the troops. Mm. But when you go to the mayor's office, it's a whole different ball game. Mm. They're, they're not dealing with the troops. No. But the chief is there. But, but no, you, you have to look at the, the city commissioner. What were they thinking of? Defund the police. Yeah, yeah You know, it's yeah. just like our nation, the few times when we had almost no military, we had up in a big war. And yeah. this is the same thing. Uh, when I was at uh, Yakima Firing Center and mm -hmm. I was a military policeman, some of the guys wanted to hide behind the bushes to catch people. So, right. Well, I'd sit out there where I could be seen, <laughs> and everybody drove right because they didn't want to want to be seen. <laughs> in fact, I caught one guy in a, three times in, in one night, and I told him the third time. I'd rather scream it at him. He says, I'm not going to write you a ticket now, but do this again, and I'll take you down to yeah. meet the yeah. provost marshal, Major mm -hmm. Bostwick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of a sudden, and the word got out. If, if it was me, Paul got behind him. Mm -hmm. I was going to take him to the provost marshal. Mm -hmm. But, but, the, and and on the garbage, also, there's the rats around. And a lot of oh, homeless yeah. oh, yeah. people oh, talk yeah. about the rats. Oh, what yeah. does that mean? It means disease, mm -hmm. deadly disease diseases. Mm -hmm. You know, we have enough with uh, flu seasons coming here, and then you have, we still have COVID. And then you're going to have these other diseases too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know it's next thing you know some of these people are living with children and some of yep. these things, and yep. you have yep. the rats come in and yep. start eating on them yep. at night. Yep. No, yep. bad deal. Yep. Well, like I say, we we, we have it again. This is why that's why I'm saying, hey, we've got a we we've got uh, the, the 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 swamp here. Yeah. We we got a swamp, and in, in all due respect. We got problems. Yeah. We got to clean it up, hmm. and it's, it's going to take more of a discussion. We're going to have these kinds of discussions uh, between you and I, and and whatever. Uh, so before we, before I interview these other folks, because I'm because in all due respect, uh, their resume doesn't is, is a variance, if you will, hmm. in, in, in terms of how we're talking. Yeah. They they've been told, look, you got to do it this way. They've hired their campaign managers and this, that, and the other, hmm. and they've said this is the, the chart. But these campaign managers don't have the background either. You know, yeah. and it's one thing to say, well, I can do research, and, and, and then from my research, now I've got the answers. No, it didn't work that way. No. You, you, you've got to have your hand. Your hand's got to be dirty. Mm -hmm. You've got to be out there doing the work. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you have to have gone through boot camp <laughs> to be able to do the job. Right. Right? You got my point? So, so but, but the fact of it is, it's, it's, uh, it's solvable, but it, it's, 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 it's tough, it's, and it costs quite a bit. And, and the taxpayers are being told to, to pick up the tab on all of this stuff aspect of it and it still doesn't get done aspect of it so on that on that particular note um, uh, we'll say that we, we, we we've gone through quite a bit right now we got about another 10 minutes is there something uh, let, let's say something else that we might want to discuss uh, at this point in time we, we talked about the idea of the application process uh -huh. and the fact that we need we need to look at that mm -hmm. look at that and and and, and I, I think that makes a makes a lot of sense to be able to say that when when one looks at it File, and, it, and the public needs to be told that. Mm -hmm. And the pe person, everybody, anybody should run. Right? Mm -hmm. But in all due respect, when they, when they fill out that application, it's something that tells them point blank. If you don't have certain backgrounds, mm -hmm. they, then they, it's on their own. They say, well, there's no sense in me doing this. this and, and if you got the committee set up right, when they get the paperwork, they will be able to say, okay, fine. Yes, this 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 person has some background. Mm -hmm. This person doesn't have any background. And and either you do it one of two ways. You either do it through the application process, and the person say, "Well, there's no sense in me filing to run for this office because I'm not. I don't have the background." Yeah, on that thing, you know, when you fill out your uh, voters pamphlet, they they ask you several questions, and right. one of them is is about your uh, uh, occupational background. Right. But that's on the voters pamphlet yes. right at the end. So yes. That yes. Maybe that portion needs to really be. Yes. Uh, that should be at the front end. Yeah. And they, they do ask what your application is yes. or your occupation at the time. Yes, so. yes. But, but 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 like you said, when you start thinking about the media mm -hmm. and what that application, that particular piece, it's not getting the same push. I mean, no. it, it's working the whole deal out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It may be there, but it's not organized. Let's put yeah. it that way. Got me. And I think think with some of the uh, media, they look at some candidates and figure this candidate's going to spend a lot of money at. Our TV station or our yeah. newspaper, yeah. so they don't care if somebody else happens to be 
fully qualified right. that, that doesn't have enough money right at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, maybe if they uh, they would get into that, and then that, like I said, just change that application form right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. What have you done in the past? Right, right, you know? right, 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 right. Uh, so that would make it make a difference. Right, right. Well, almost like what we just got through doing. I mean, I, I mean, well, my 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 whole uh, my whole interview with you was to basically get you talking to yeah. wherever you've been. See, you you yeah. are you are running for governor, and then the bottom line, you have you should have to have some kind of background and some interest of doing government work. Yeah. You know, and 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 actually partic and then participating in uh, and even running for office as, as you know the way you've run for office. You've learned something because you you had, you had to delve into things. And you had to have something to say, right? You got me. Yeah, and you and I, with you know our backgrounds, the deal is we take a, a look not just right here. We're looking at the whole exactly. thing because exactly. you know, like in war, the deal is somebody is shooting at you, not from next door. Exactly. They're from a long ways exactly. away. Exactly. So, it, I've always had to learn a long time ago about the bigger things. You know, my my dad was into mm -hmm. a lot of things and. Was, aunts and uncles, you know, they're in different things and, you know, they're in logging and fishing and farming and mm -hmm. manufacturing and, you know, a whole bunch of things. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it gives you wide background and then, you know, they get all kinds of magazines mm -hmm. and makes real interesting reading and yeah, right. stuff like that. Well, you're right because, again, like I said, again, this swamp aspect of it and we, I think we've accomplished some things in this particular session because we have viewer heads. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got bureau chiefs in each of the various entities mm -hmm. of concern, yeah. right? We got bureau heads. Yeah. They are. They should be at the table. Mm -hmm. They should be part and parcel of putting that application form together. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and uh, and even then, adding on from the standpoint of what are some of the issues that that they're having problems with that they need to solve. Mm -hmm. The bureau heads. Mm -hmm. That should also be a part of that application process. Mm -hmm. And then that way, that would attract people then who have certain backgrounds to be able to say, I think I can deal with this. Mm -hmm. Then, that, then that, that, that's a real app now. In terms well, of one of the real problems is, is that when Jimmy Carter became president and they went to the zero-based budget and zero-based budget modified, right. they are so obsessed with the, the budget and, and the money, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you uh, write a proposal which cannot exceed two pages and they they look at the bottom and they talk about Bruce the money the money you're talking about well, what about the pros and cons no the, the money mm -hmm. they're so hamstrung by thinking about the money mm -hmm. and you and you and I would say we're going to change something that already exists well most of the money still is mm -hmm. there already mm -hmm. you know and it might be using the same money but mm -hmm. the fact that they see money listed on a sheet of paper they just go out of their mind mm -hmm. they're just absolutely paralyzed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and and I've talked to them like at work, you know, they come something new. And, and it, of course, they use it sometimes if they don't like the idea or they don't like you, ah, it's not in the budget. Yeah. So nothing gets done. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, uh, in, in taking taking this extra five, this five minutes now as a kind of a what have we, what have we accomplished spending an hour here talking about these various issues within the swamp and you just can't drain a swamp if you got a bunch of junk down at the bottom of it right you gotta you, after you drain the water you gotta clean all the mess that's down there right got me and yeah. we, we, we haven't even gotten there yet see <laughs> we're just looking at the swamp so to speak and, and I would say that and for those individuals who are elected to office today and, and having that responsibility and things are happening mm -hmm. uh, you know and sure they might have done everything they could to try to do a good job mm -hmm. but they don't have the background yeah. They, they don't have the resume aspect of it, and I even say that now. This will be very specific to the in regards to the mayor. You know, guys, guys having a tough time. He really wants to do what he wants to do. He wants to do, but he's never been there. He, one, he's never been military at all. He's yeah. never been in any. He hasn't been a bureau head. He hasn't actually got his hand dirty and on all this other stuff. Uh, I, I'd say that he might might have known one and one was two. Maybe not, maybe it's more two and a half. But but the fact of the matter is, you got to have some sort of background on on some of the things that are, that are happening and, and he just just didn't have it he just he's worked it worked his franny off aspect of it yeah the deal about making that plan and then start operating that plan you know they had the uh, the riots down at portland state right. with the college students and yep. stuff 
Terry Shrunk took over the whole city yeah. except for the, for the financial part. Mm -hmm. And the deal is, and I was called up on Special National Guard active duty, okay. but I was talking to the guys who were left behind, and the park crews were skeletonized. Mm -hmm. All, everything else was skeletonized. They were, had trucks out there, and they were moving barricades, and they were moving picnic tables, they mm -hmm. were moving park tables. Whenever the police call up, we need this or we need that, why somebody from somewhere in the city moved on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they, they had the, uh, uh, the, the flat, dumping flatbeds mm -hmm ready 24 hours a day and there was there's a crew of two three guys in each truck and they were there and because it was organized and of course like i said you know terry shrump was uh, was a fireman you know yeah yeah you got to fire well, yeah, while yeah, you got you got to yeah, do something yeah, and he, it was he, a sheriff and, yeah he had and background he had yeah, background yeah. and so he was able to react to that but in all due respect in today's right criteria i mean like i said the guys i mean willie has done as best he can but the fact made he didn't have that kind of background no. it's really a sad note aspect of it now, if there was a city manager there with all that, because that, but when, when you hire a person as a city manager, you have to have background. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we don't have a city manager. No, See? But, it, but it's still a deal as if they had the, those three bureaus yeah. under the mayor. Yeah. So yeah. he'd be talking to three managers right, right there, right. and they can get their heads together and say, right. okay, this is what we got to do. But, but, but Boss, you, <laughs> say okay. Right, right. But, but again, too, if you're talking to three bureau heads, and look here, you can't communicate with them if you don't if you if you don't know how to communicate if you don't have any background. Yeah, you got to have some background. Yeah. See, so anyway, uh, we, we're there, and uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get uh, get over this peace aspect of it. But we're gonna have to start making some changes, and the time is now to do it. Yeah. I mean, everybody's having this problem, by the way. Mm -hmm. Not just Oregon; mm -hmm. every state in the union's having the problem in many cases. Yeah. The ones that are operating very carefully, we, we pretty well know what that's all about. But mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is, uh, we, we're focusing on Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. and I hear in the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. and then right now it's a cesspool. <laughs> it's a cesspool, big time aspect mm -hmm. of it. We got, as it, as, and it's not my quote, it's, hey, it's their quote. We got six, I, I've added one, but we got s six mayors in mm -hmm. the city of Portland. Six of them. Mm -hmm. And the only one that has the most experience is former mayor Sam Adams. Yeah. <laughs> See, and I, I think just for to start with, we can maybe start up with him. Yeah. Give him the lead. He's kind of like taking the lead, but he's in the background. He should be brought up at, at the front of the deal. The, but not times people are thinking about their own turf area from the standpoint of saying, well, I'm the mayor, you know, and then you got another guy saying, I'm the mayor, and you know, and this, that, and other. And that's why we got in this whole difference about the defunding the police aspect of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, so <laughs> again, background. And, I, and, and and we know who's sitting in that seat with with um, uh, with Joanne with Joanne Hardesty, Commissioner Hardy. She's working as best she can, if you will, but don't have the background. You got my point? But she's a mayor. She's a mayor, just like the others are. Well, she's got a lot of a lot of opponents, so she may not be around long. Well, but all of them, as far as I'm concerned. She <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're getting down to the point. We just can't blame just one person. That's what I'm just saying. Yeah. See, I mean, it's easy to blame one person, but that's not that's not well. The, the solution to this problem is not one person. No. We got We got to deal with the whole deal. Yeah. If, if they get together and organize themselves, and maybe even consider getting a city manager and getting someone that can communicate communicate with those bureau heads, mm -hmm. that would be the city manager's job, yeah. right? Then they might be able to get themselves out of the deal and get it done. But someone has to draw this stuff up. And that's their responsibility. Whether they do it or not, I don't know. Yeah. That's going to be another issue aspect of it. So, folks, we've been having this discussion. I've been having this discussion with John Sweeney. He's running for governor of the state of Oregon, and we're taking advantage of his background and his exposure to this piece. But, again, thank you for being with us, and please tune in next time around. Have a good one. Bruce here.